Dear students, in the last class we have discussed about anther anatomy. In that we have seen anther wall, anther wall layers, microsporangium structure and microsporogenesis, tetrad formation, different types of tetrads and cytokinesis. In this video we will be discussing about development stages of anther. Development stages of anther in the last class we have discussed about mature anther anatomy but it is impossible to develop all that mature anatomy at one step in this video we are going to study how that mature anther anatomy is formed by step by step okay for that we need to cut very young anther very young anther okay whenever we cut a very young anther it consists a oval shape structure means like this in the anatomy we can see two structures one is a single layered epidermis a single layered epidermis inside there will be undifferentiated meristematic tissue this is meristematic tissue okay whenever we cut a very young anther the anatomy like this we can see one layer of epidermis inside there will be meristematic tissue this is the first stage of anther anatomy okay in the next stage the anatomy like this the size will increase somewhat again you can see epidermis is same okay here in this step we can see de-differentiation of one cell from each corner means this cell okay these meristematic tissue from these meristematic tissue one cell will be de-differentiated into a specialized cell called archisporeal cell which is having a prominent nucleus and then cytoplasm this is initial cell for all sporangium and anther wall for all these things it is an initial cell okay archi sporeal cell okay here in the each corner means it give one lobe in the latter stage that's why in each corner in four corners we can see one archisporeal cell this is archisporeal this is archisporeal this one is also archisporeal okay only one cell can get differentiation from this tissue okay that is archisporeal cell now we will see another stage okay here the epidermis as it is we will concentrate on this archisporeal only now onwards okay the archisporeal cell now radially elongate radially means in this direction okay so that the length will be increased now here the archisporeal cell will undergone one periclinal division periclinal means in this manner in this plane okay periclinal division it undergone one periclinal division so that it will give two cells one is towards inside one is towards outside okay the outside cell is called parietal cell parietal cell the inner side cell is called sporogenous cell due to the 
one mitotic division of archesporeal cell here we got two cells outside parietal cell inside sporogenous cell okay in the next step or in the next stage again these two cells I'll draw here also okay now we have two cells inner side sporogenous cell outer side parietal cell now the outer parietal cell is undergone one more periclinal division one more periclinal division one more periclinal division so that it will give two cells again okay two cells again but the sporogenous tissue not undergone any division still now okay only the outer parietal cell only it undergone one division that is periclinal division so that we have two cells now okay here the outer side cell is known as outer parietal cell the inside cell is called inner parietal cell here sporogenous cell as it is okay now we have three cells okay now we will see the next step what happened okay now we have three step cells this is sporogenous cell this is inner parietal cell this is outer parietal cell now again one more periclinal division here take place so that again it divide and give two cells this cell also again it will give two cells okay now these cells are called the outermost out, outermost cell is called endothesium initial cell this is middle layer initial cell this is also middle layer initial cell because in generally we have two middle layers that's why here we have two middle layer initial cells and the innermost cell is tapetal initial cell now due to these three periclinal divisions we have four cells from outer cell means parietal cell from parietal cell we have four cells now here the sporogenous cell is not undergone any division at okay now this is the stage again in the next further steps they undergone many anticlinal divisions anticlinal divisions means like this i will draw one more diagram here okay now due to the periclinal divisions we have four cells from outer parietal cell and one sporogenous cell now okay now it will undergo anticlinal divisions anticlinal means in this direction like this number of divisions will be taken place so that the cells will be formed like layers okay so that we will get one two three four layers and here one more layer also present that is epidermis 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 now we have five layers these five layers together called anther wall okay now we understood how the anther wall is developed from a single layer right first it undergone one periclinal division so that we got two cells again it undergone one more periclinal division so that we got four cells okay like this these four cells again undergone number of anticlinal divisions now we have to understand periclinal and anticlinal division okay periclinal division means if the surface is like this whenever the cell divide in this horizontal manner that is called periclinal division but whenever the cell is like this divide in this line in this plane 
okay so that two cells will form side by side here upside one downside one but here side by side this is called anti clinal division this is periclinal division first the parietal layer undergone periclinal divisions only so that we got four cells here okay horizontally placed four cells first form after that they undergone anticlinal division so that the anther wall layers are formed okay now we know about anther wall development okay now we will see the sporangium development from this sporogenous cell the, na the name itself indicates that sporogenous means it will give sporangium in future or spore development in the future that's why the name has been given but before we going to know about this we know we need to know about different types of anther wall developments okay we have four types of anther wall developments based on the division we have four types of anther wall development means how the anther wall is developed from this initial parietal cell that is the idea okay now we will see first type that is basic type basic type the second one is dicotyledonous type the third one is monocotyledonous type the fourth one is reduced type reduced type okay the criteria is how the anther wall is developing based on that we have four types basic type dicotyledonous type monocotyledonous type reduced type now we will see one by one after that we can easily understand each type okay now the first one is basic type basic type in the basic type in the initial stage we have epidermis we have one initial cell that is archesporial cell now we will, uh, we will be discussing about basic type only okay now I will redrawing this uh, this portion here okay in the initial stage we have epidermis one layer of epidermis and one initial cell that is archesporial cell from this how the anther wall is developed that is the idea of basic type anther wall development okay now this is epidermis this is archesporial cell now epidermis again archesporial cell now in the second step what happened this archesporial cell divide in periclinal manner in this manner okay so that it gave two cells the outermost cell is called parietal cell the innermost cell is called sporogenous cell okay again in the next step we have two cells in the two cells this cell again means the parietal cell again divide in a periclinal manner only it will give two cells again this inner cell only divide in periclinal manner so that we can get two cells again okay this inner cell is called inner parietal cell the outer cell is called outer parietal cell okay this is third step in the fourth step same thing the epidermis here we have three cells the sporogenous cell will remain as it is but these inner cells means this cell and this cell again it undergone one more division periclinar manner only so that it will give two it will give two cells what happened here 
here inside endothecium cell will be formed here middle layer cell here also middle layer cell here tapetal cell means it give four cells outermost cell is endothecium the inner two cells will give middle layers the innermost cell will give tapetum okay this is most common type found in throat angiosperms all angiosperms almost all angiosperms that's why it is considered as basic type of anther wall development okay whenever the cells or layer of anther wall developed in this manner that type is known as basic type okay but we have another types also they are dicotyledonous type monocotyledonous type reduced type you will see about these things also okay second one is dicotyledonous type dicotyledonous type in this type again we will repeat the same thing first you will see the uh, initial stage of cells okay this is epidermis we have one archisporial cell okay archisporial cell in the next step it will divide in periclinal manner only so that we can get two cells that is parietal and sporogenous cells in the third stage also you can see the same thing what we have seen here okay again this inner uh, outer side cell that is parietal cell will undergo one more periclinal division so that it will give two cells that is outer parietal cell inner parietal cell okay inner parietal cell okay in the next step we have three cells now here it will be somewhat differ okay the outermost cell that is outer parietal cell only undergone parietal division parietal division so that we will get two cells from this cell the middle cell means this cell will remain as it is means without any divisions so that it will give as it is it will give tapetum cell or tapetal layer in the future this cell will give middle layer middle layer in future this outermost cell will give endothecium in future means we have only three layers in anther wall okay three layers in anther wall okay that is the difference between basic type and dicotyledonous type okay here one middle layer it is absent here okay the inner parietal layer will not di uh, dividing again that's why as it is it will give only one tapetal cell only there is no middle layer from inner parietal cell that is the difference between basic type and dicotyledonous type now we will see the third one that is mono cotyledonous type monocotyledonous type it is also very simple first we have a archisporial cell in the next step sorry it is epidermis this is archisporial cell it divide in periclinal manner so that we get two cells that is parietal sporo genus cells and the next step here also same it is epidermis here it is sporogenous cell but here the parietal layers the outer parietal layer directly gives rise endothecium endothecium the inner parietal layer again it will divide in a periclinal manner so that it will give 
one middle layer initial cell and one subatom initial cell okay it is completely opposite to this dicotyledon style here the outer cell undergone division periclinal division so that it gave one endothelium cell and one middle layer cell but here the outside means outer parietal cell directly gives rise endothelium cell, endothelium layer but inner layer so inner cell will divide in a periclinal manner so that it will give one middle layer one tapetum layer okay that is the difference between dicotyledonous and monocotyledonous type okay now we will see the fourth type that is reduced type reduced type here we have epidermis again archisporial cell in the next step again epidermis archisporial cell it will divide in periclinal manner so that we got two cells that is sporogenous cell parietal cell okay in the next step again epidermis this is sporogenous cell as it is but here the parietal cell will divide in periclinal manner and give us one outer endothelium initial cell inside tapetal initial cell means in the future it will give endothelium layer of anther wall it will give tapetum layer of anther wall but here there is no formation of middle layers that's why it is called as reduced type means in the reduced type we can't see any middle layers okay this is reduced type of anther wall development okay now uh, we have seen four types of anther wall development uh, types okay and during this anther wall development or just after anther wall development this innermost that is sporogenous initial cell also started to divide in mitotical manner like this okay it will give a mass of tissue called as sporogenous tissue sporogenous tissue okay in the latter stage these sporogenous tissue again they divide and gives rise mmc means microspore microspore mother cells okay these microspore mother cells again divide meiotically meiotically it will give four cells that is tetrads okay these tetrads will give microspores these microspores transform into pollen grains or male gametophytes okay but here one more important point is in generally sporogenous tissue divide mitotically and gives rise mmc means microspore mother cells this is common phenomena but sometimes the sporogenous tissue directly act as microspore mother cells without any mitotic divisions sporogenous tissue itself acting as a microspore mother cells means the sporogenous tissue or cells itself gives tetrads okay that is uh, some rare phenomenon okay this is the actual procedure of anther wall development and microsporangium development now i will explain with the help of this diagram how the anther wall is formed okay first of all for example the basic common type is the first type that is basic type okay in basic type how the anther wall is produced that we will see okay in the initial stage there will be one cell that is archisporial cell okay archisporial cell this is initial point okay in the next step in the next step it will elongate radially okay divide into two cells okay 
the outer cell cell is called parietal cell the inner cell is called sporogenous cell okay in the next step these are two cells okay the sporogenous cell remain as it is but the outer cell that is parietal cell again undergone one more periclinal division so that it will give two cells these cells are called inner parietal cell outer parietal cell next again here like this the sporogenous cell sporogenous cell inside okay the outer two cells are outer parietal cell inner parietal cell this is outer parietal cell this is inner parietal cell again these two cells undergone one more periclinal division so that each cell will give rise two cells okay so that total four cells will be formed in this step okay these cells are the first cell is the outermost first cell is endothecium cell the second and third cell is middle layers middle layers the innermost cell is tapetal cell okay from these cells as initials okay these cells are initials from these cells in the latter stage we will get these rows okay endothecium okay this endothecium layer formed from this initial cell by anticlinal divisions in this manner okay this is endothecium from the middle layer initial cells these, these two layers will be formed later from tapetal cell this layer will be formed okay this is all about anther wall only okay here we will see about sporogenous tissue divisions also okay now we have four layers of anther wall and one epidermis also okay here the sporogenous initial cell now what happen is the sporogenous initial cell will divide mitotically it give sporogenous tissue okay sporogenous tissue this sporogenous tissue again it will give mmc means microspore mother cells these microspore mother cells again meiotically divide and means sexually okay meiotically divide and form tetrads tetrads these tetrads will give four microspores four microspores these four microscope in the latter stage they transform into pollen grains this is actual procedure here in these steps we understood how the anther wall is produced step by step after anther wall development we have also seen how the sporogenous tissue and tetrads and mmc and meiosis cells are formed from this sporogenous initial cell okay by understanding both of these means anther wall and this sporogenous tissue we totally done the anther development okay this is all about anther wall and sporogenous tissue and their divisions here you can see one more time it is epidermis which is formed in the initial stage of anther development only these cells are formed due to the periclinal divisions of this parietal layer up to this okay up to this these cells are product of this parietal single cell only okay the remaining this portion it is a product of this inner sporang uh, sporogenous cell okay it is a mother cell for this part it is mother cell for this part okay this is all about anther wall and microsporangium totally anther development stages okay thank you